Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to be talking about overcoming blame um, by overcoming the free will belief. You know, basically creating a world without blame. And um, this this should be a, a cool show. Um, I'm not ordinarily. I go through why free will is an illusion, <laughs> and um, this show, I, I, you know, as I said last, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with a cold. You can probably hear it in my voice. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling kind of like tired, so I don't want to expend all that energy. And um, so, all right, uh, yeah, let's just get get right into it, okay? Because this is amazing. My God, um, to the extent that we understand that free will is an illusion, and um, and our wills are causal, then um, there is no reason. We, we lose all reason to blame anyone, um, to blame ourselves. Now, there's, there is there's a caveat that I've got to work on. Um, it's interesting. I did a show kind of like, well, fine, all right, everything is predetermined. Nobody has a free will. That means that you can't rationally, logically blame anyone or yourself for anything. You know, that... That's the basic um, understanding. But then, like, you know, when things, when we do stuff that's wrong, all right, fine, it may not be our fault, but it's, you know, something is causing us to do this. And yeah, we, um, we generally refer to this something as the universe or God or cause and effect. And um, so then the question becomes, well, wait a minute. Fine, we can create a blame-free world with regard to each other and ourselves, which would be a godsend. Think about it. I'm gonna, I'll get into this more. But, um, but, you know, well, can we blame the universe or God? And I've done shows where I say, well, you know, I hope not. I hope, we, I hope that God or the universe is, is um, as innocent as we are, I, um, that's what I like to believe, but, um, <laughs> no, if we're going to be sincere and truthful and logical and, you know, rational, yeah, um, if blame is attributing, you know, let's say wrongdoing to, to the, um, to the agent or the, um, whatever it is that's causing the wrongdoing, then yeah, I guess like it is God's fault and it is, or it is the universe's fault. Um, last night I was reading through some, um, who was it? I don't know if it was Jonathan Edwards or Schopenhauer, one of these guys, um, writing on, um, no, it might have been Spinoza actually. Um, he was like actually making the case that, um, well, no, you really can't, you know, hold God, um, that, that God doesn't have a free will either, that, that God has to, you know, be, oh, well, all right, well, you know, that God has to um, do what God has to do, and that, you know, in a certain sense, that makes sense, you know, that's, 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 yeah, it, it's clear. In other words, like, if, if we define God as all good, you know, and that's not, necessarily my definition, but like, let's say it were, and um, let's say that's our definition, and that's, let's say that what God was, then God couldn't help but be all good. Um, if we define God as um, everywhere, omnipresent, as, as most religions, I believe, do as I do, you know, I kind of like have a, a scientific definition of God, then certainly um, God is everywhere. I don't know, I think I think I lost my shirt. All right, so <laughs> I'm tired. Um, so yeah, so the the question of whether we can blame the universe, I think is yeah. I, I you know. All right, it's an open question, but I I, I um it, it's probably preferable, wiser. Um to kind of like not blame the universe? Maybe not, you know, I, I don't know. 
But anyway, the, you know, the theme of this show, and I got to do another show on this because, like, you know, my gears are turning. I'm, I'm getting a lot of stuff that, that I haven't presented before maybe that, um, or that needs to be repeated. But, but, yeah, this show is about, like, imagine, I mean, imagine a world where, like, from, from as early as, as our children are able to understand what we're saying, you know, through nursery school and kindergarten and first through sixth grade and all, you know, throughout a kid's life, ch our children's life, um, lives, you know, their parents and all the adults and all the learning that they're going through has as its premise that, um, that it's illogical. It's just wrong. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, yeah, it's just illogical to, to blame anyone for anything. It's kind of like, it's as illogical as, like, let's say something happened, let's say here in White Plains, you know, and, like, to blame someone, well, I don't know, <laughs> get complicated. But, yeah, it's just like, you know, if you understand the free will is an illusion, that our wills are causal, you know, the, the clear and very strong and obvious um, corollary and um, what follows from that is that, you know, blame is just like, it just no longer makes sense. So, so imagine that. I mean, <laughs> you know, imagine when kids like, let's say, you know, I, I would imagine kids would, would continue to disagree and, you know, have some arguments maybe sometimes uh, about whatever. But imagine these kids kind of like operating under a causal will perspective as opposed to this insane delusion of free will. You know, one kid will go to the other, hey, why'd you do that? And the other kid will go, you know, I don't know. And, you know, the first kid, well, it's, it, you know, kind of like hurt my feelings. And, you know, the first one might, uh, the other one might go, well, yeah, I, um, yeah, I, um, yeah, I have no, you know, and, and, and actually what they might do, which is really the, the gift of, of not blaming and understanding the, the um, cause and nature of our will, is what they'll do, no, not what they might, what they will do, because we'll, what we will hopefully from our wisdom condition them to do is, um, is explore, explore, you know, why did the first child um, do something that the second uh, child found um, hurtful, and who, who knows? It may not have been whatever, but um, but when you when you go that ra route, when you kind of like teach kids to kind of like don't focus on the blame because the blame is just wrong. It's insane. It's like you know, focus on why things are happening. Then um, that that will generally tend to create the conditions that will lead to uh, far better resolutions of whatever. And so, like, imagine imagine an entire world working like that, where like everybody gets it. Everybody gets free will is an illusion. Everybody gets that um, that you know our world and our human will is completely causal, and so that you know it's just like illogical. It makes absolutely no sense to blame others. Now, all right, you know, I'm glad I caught myself because like, um, yeah, I, I, I want to kind of like redefine um, blame. I, I, I um, talked about this in the last show and I'm not sure, I, I don't think I mentioned it um, in this one. What I mean by blame is that um, when somebody does something wrong or when we do, do something wrong, um, we say that it was up to them or up to us, that, that we did it of our own free will, that nothing about which we have no control, I'm not sure, um, nothing about which we have no control is compelling us, is making us do what we did that, that, that was wrong, whatever. Um, so, so yeah, when, when we blame is like we're, we're saying, okay, it wasn't the universe, it wasn't the causal past, it wasn't God, it wasn't your genes, it wasn't how you were raised, it wasn't what you learned or didn't learn, your preferences, your desires, your emotions, it wasn't any of that, it was you. And my God, you know, when I say that, right? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's, it's a kind of like um, 
hostile attitude. It's a hostile uh, relational attitude. Um, it's like, you know, it's putting the onus, the responsibility on a person that is completely innocent. And um, so, yeah, when everybody gets that, 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 like, that, um, that it's completely insane, completely illogical to blame anyone for anything because we don't have a free will, um, you know, I think even though, God, <laughs> even though emotions, I've got a cold, I got a, all right, that's right, I can do one more show. Even though um, emotions will sometimes override our reason and cause us to aggress toward others or they toward us, um, much of the reason we aggress has to do, though, with a, a kind of like a, a rational, reasoned, free will based consideration of what would ha what happened you know that's what the blame um comes from so so again think about this um envision envision a world where where we no longer do that and um yeah as i was saying like sometimes emotions might tend to let's say lead us to want to do that you know I, th I, I, would, I would have to I would have to predict um, that to the extent that our world um, conditions everyone because you know we can do this so easily my god this could be done in six months a year I mean it might take a bit longer for it to be um, integrated made habitual <laughs> but to the extent we do this uh, <laughs> yeah we, we um, and you got to realize, it, it'll be a blame-free world, and if it's a blame-free world, it's in a, relatively speaking, it's an aggression-free wor world. Because I would, you know, taking a ballpark guess, I would imagine that um, over 90% of what, of, of, of what causes aggression, what causes conflict and, and adversity between people and between groups, um, is necessitated, ne excuse me, necessitated <laughs> by, um, by our our belief in free will, by blaming, you know, by by the blaming that that um, results from our believing in free will. If we didn't have that belief, if we didn't, yeah, if we understood collectively that um, everything is predetermined. Um, all of a sudden the, the blame vanishes there's there's no reason for it we tend you know we're hardwired um incidentally to um to always do what we consider most reasonable you know two alternatives um always you know i mean well again sometimes our emotions will kick in and you know add a, an extra element that, that comes you know that evades our understanding as to whether that the emotion is rational or not but generally speaking, um, <coughs> okay. Um, I gotta get a drink. Um, all right. So, um, yeah. Um, why is this important? I gotta. I gotta talk about this. We've got about thirteen minutes and ten seconds, and I got <laughs> blame is couldn't be more important to what's happening or you know overcoming blame you know couldn't be more important to to what's happening in the world today um and i'm referring to the to the to the um global occupy revolution of the 99 percent um you know this you know when you have the top one percent controlling so much more wealth than um than their numbers would justify and so much more power than their numbers would justify. And when so many people's jobs and, um, and future, child rearing, you know, establishing a family, getting educated and all, depends on basically overthrowing the, um, 
the one percent you know i mean it is, it is a revolution it's um it's political and you know but to the extent we do that um we um we can go through this revolution in a way that um that isn't um that isn't fraught with conflict i mean um you know, as the one percent continue to ignore the um, the needs, and, and you know, I got to remind myself as I'm saying this, because um, that's just what happened. As I was like, I was kind of like, quote unquote, blaming the one percent, and I caught myself, and I was, you know, I wanted to to um, inject the aside that naturally it's not their fault, you know, because they don't have a free will. But but as you know, as the one percent ignore. As the universe, as the universal will compels the one percent to ignore what the universal will has actually compelled the ninety-nine percent to conclude and do, you know, to blame it all. Um, well, as, <laughs> no, no, as as the um, as the universe, I want to get this right because basically what I'm doing actually, I'm, I'm a, presenting a point, but also at the same time I'm presenting it within uh, with the syntax and grammar of a, uh, a causal will consciousness. So rather than saying, you know, as the, um, the top 1% ignore, you know, the needs of 99%, you know, again, I mean, you get this. As the universal will makes the 1% ignore the needs of the 99%, and then the universal will then makes the 99% get increasingly angry, at being ignored, at needs be being ignored, with the free will pr perspective, that will eventually lead to a lot of hostility and aggression, directly, indirectly, psychologically, materially, and in various ways toward the one percent. You know, um, and um, and so. So what happens? Um, let's say, you know, let's imagine that um, through a very fortu fortuitous circumstances, through really um, something unexpected, you know, within the next six months to a year, um, people really get this, that, yeah, free will is an illusion, and not only is it harmful to our personal lives, but now it's threatening to, um, to create some kind of, like, you know, some kind of like a civil war here in the United States. I mean, just like, I don't think it'd be like, you know, I don't think it's, um, it'll essentially be political, of course, but um, I would think, I mean, I don't think we're going to descend into the kind of um, crisis that, um, that Libya just um, overcame. But, um, but as we, you know, as people get increasingly angry with the one percent, you know, with people who look and sound and seem like they're part of the one percent and all, because that's what happens. Um, you know, if if we're able to, to to overcome this illusion of free will, we're not going to go. Um, we're not going to. You know, our the, the protest of the ninety nine percent will proceed peacefully and considerately and intelligently and sanely. Um, so yeah, naturally, I mean, like the um, the one percent have to lose their power and wealth if we are to um, successfully address climate change and if people are to get you know jobs and um, and all because like um, you know another way of understanding actually why it's not really the people and I think this people get this is um, it's not really the one percent as people who um, who are really the enemies I think most people get you know, from, from what they know of the world, that it's really the system. You know, it's the people that came before us who may not have realized the wrong they were doing. Maybe it wasn't wrong back then to have all the power in the hands of, of a very few. Just like back then, you know, there were kings and queens just, you know, running entire regions. So, um, so yeah, I think we get that. That it's really a system-wide... Um, challenge we're, we're, we're facing so yeah we, we, we dispense with the blame um, 
and and change the system. You know, um, have it um, work the way it, it should work. Okay, I think I've talked about it about enough. <sighs> okay, um, yeah, <laughs> you know, um, when I th when I think about the the significance of this show of you know. Uh, our Manhattan show, The Myth of Free Will, um, it just like, it, it kind of like, one of the things that, that really, um, that, that stands out, you know, to me, to my, to me personally, is that like, you know, we're living in a completely insane world to the extent that we believe we have a free will. I mean, completely insane literally insane we you know i'm not sure <laughs> there may be you know a person who believes that they are napoleon is probably less insane than a person i mean unless he is but napoleon <laughs> than a person who believes they have a free will that's how insane it is and so like yeah to me you know it's like the, the universe is compelling you know us to finally get it to finally say wait a minute you know <laughs> and this is this is like so funny in a way because like think about it it's the universe or the causal past or god or whatever you want to call it that made us erroneously conclude that we have a free will to begin with okay think about that it's like so like you know the universe compels us for a while to think that way and now now you know it couldn't come um sooner because it's so so urgently needed now. Apparently, you know, thankfully, the uh, the universe is compelling us to to get this right to um, to stop blaming ourselves and each other for things you know that we have absolutely no control over that we're absolutely innocent of. And um, so that's you know the sanity component is what. Um, what really appeals to me a lot in a certain sense, because I guess in a certain, you know, I, as a scientist, I, um, I tend to put much more faith in truth than, than even in, in beneficial delusions, because, you know, we as human beings do hold certain delusions that are self-serving, and they very often um, serve to keep us happier as individuals. You know, like we tend to, for example, believe that um, that we're more, we're, you know, we're better than average. You know, they do studies on this. You know, and and we're, you know, obviously, if if everybody's believing that they're better than average, you know, <laughs> that, that 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 can't be. A, it's got to be an illusion. So, um, okay, we've got we got about four minutes left. I'm fading. See, if I had a free will, if I had a free will, I mean, I, um, I'd summon up the energy. And I'm, I'm sure, like, you know, some people could do that. Some people could, like, you know, have a cold ten times worse and just, you know, have a lot more energy. But I haven't learned how to do that. If I had a free will, I would have. Um, okay. So, all right, we've got about three and a half minutes. What else? Um... <clears throat> All right, do another commercial for the show. Um, uh, every Wednesday night um, at 11 p.m. until maybe mid-January, where, where it may change to another day and time, my very good friend who, who you know, he's really sharp. The guy's a Mensa, and he, you know, he... Um, he both gets that free will is an illusion, and he gets that it's important to, um, to kind of disseminate this truth. But what, what was so cool is like, you know, he lives in Manhattan and he gets that, um, that creating a live call-in show in Manhattan to explain this truth is, is kind of like a major way to promote it, to, uh, to disseminate it. So anyway, so, like, um, so he decided to produce um, a show called Myth of Free Will and uh, it's in preview right now. You know, we've been in previews. Um, I think we've we've done about eight episodes, half hour live. You know, taking calls from people. Not just let me say this. Like, all right, the show cablecasts 
to the island of Manhattan, you know, the, the cable subscribers. And Manhattan has about 1.5 million people in it. I mean, I'm sure they're not all cable subscribers, of course, but, um, but the show, you know, the station, uh, the Manhattan Neighborhood Network, MNN, that, um, that cable casts us, um, it also streams our, um, you know, our show live, you know, uh, ac across the world. So you could be like, you know, you could be in China, you know, checking out the show and, and like, you know, asking questions and all about this. It's so cool. Um, so anyway, that's, yeah, 11 o'clock every Wednesday. And as I said, like, there's a new quarter starting um, in January. And we may get a different time. What we're, we're trying to do is, like, you know, half an hour is cool. We, <laughs> 11 to 11.30 every Wednesday. But um, we're trying to get a whole hour, you know, because, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> in this case, more is definitely better. So um, anyway, that's going really well. Um, what else? Okay, got about a minute left. Um, okay, well, you know, I, I, you know, if I had a free will, I could easily think of like something very, very interesting and, <laughs> and informative and entertaining to fill the the last 45 minutes with, and maybe this is <laughs> uh, somewhat of that, but um, it would, if I had a free will, no. Think about it, if I had a free will, um, yeah, these last 30 seconds would be um, historic, but I don't think they're going to be, because, you know, it's not coming to me. Anyway, um, so, um, yeah, we're going to, um, we're going to, I'm going to be back, you know, this is like episode, this is episode 44, this is cool, and I, I taped eight other episodes with, with um, guests and co-hosts, so like, we're up to like, 52 episodes a full year and we're just getting started i'm just gonna start all right so you know uh, i hope you will tune in next time to exploring religion free will thanks <laughs>